let's make these notes now and setting goals. The promise of the future is an awesome force. We look back for experience, but we have to look forward now for inspiration. What gives us inspiration to get up in the morning and do our job, learn skills, develop all that we can possibly be is the promise of the future. It can be so powerful that it can overwhelm any adversary you might have, any difficulty you might have. Here is a key phrase. Reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Reasons make the difference and your appetite and zest for taking on the challenge, doing the job, becoming successful. Mr. Schaff said, if you have enough reasons, you can do the most incredible things. You can get through the most difficult day. You can overcome the most unbelievable challenges if you have enough reasons. And so he said to me, if you haven't got a list of your goal, it's probably because you don't have enough reasons. He said, I'm sure since I've met you, you have enough intelligence. And he said, you have enough good health. And he said, you have all the things working for you. But here is what we must work on now is to have enough reason looking into the future, developing reasons. Now, here is a note to make. It is important to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people let the past pull them back, pull them back. The past can be like gravity if you let it to pull you back. Some people live in the past. They live in the darkness of the past. They live in the mistakes of the past. They live in the discouragement of the past. They didn't make it. And that affects them for the rest of their life living in the past so we don't want the past to pull us back to live in the past so make this note dreams and goals can become magnets dreams and goal can become magnets and the stronger the goal the higher the purpose and the more powerful the objective the stronger this magnet is that pulls you to that direction now not only does your goal and your objective pull you that direction here is what they also pull you through they pull you through all kinds of down days they pull you through a difficult time it'll put you through some winter of your life some people get lost in the confusion of the day simply because their goal is not right enough to pull them through next it's goals that drives us to take advantage of the spring why would the farmer put the plow in the ground in the spring if couldn't see the vision of the harvest when the summer is finished is it possible to see the finished harvest and the answer is yes we do that's simply by faith. Key phrase, faith is the ability to see things that don't yet exist. Here is what we want to do in our goal setting session, is to start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish, where you would like to go, the person you would like to be, and see if you can't get a better picture of finished objective. See yourself there, see yourself in the position of there is nothing you can do about the past, but you can do a great deal about the future. You don't have to be the same person you were yesterday. You can make changes in your life. Absolutely starting changes in a fairly short period of time. You can make changes. You can even, you cannot even conceive of now. If you give yourself a chance, your ability will grow. You have untapped talents and potentials that you haven't even reached for yet. As time goes on, you will be able to reach deeper and deeper. The first thing you will know, you will be able to do things though you could handle. You will have the idea that that you've never had before. All of this is spurred by the goal setting process. When you know what you want and you want it badly enough, the answer will come to you. It can't tell you why it works. All I know is it works. Give yourself a chance to become all you can become and to accomplish all you accomplish. Let me give you a Bible philosophy that teach, teaches how to get whatever you want. Here is what it says. Ask that that's it. Ask of all the important skill to learn in life. Be sure to include the skill of asking. What does ask mean? Ask means what do you want and the complete formula is staggering. It says ask and you will receive. Work on your list of why. One of the big stress of success is to come up with a strong enough why. In leadership training, here is what we learn. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, if your goals aren't powerful, if the version isn't clear, the old prophet said, without a vision we die, without a vision we perish, without a dream we're nothing. 
everything. We stayed because we were committed. We left because we were disillusioned. But we come back because we we were lost. Without dream, we're nothing. When the why gets big, powerful, strong, how seems to be so much easier. Without the strong enough why, the how seems to be too difficult almost to accomplish. So how do you manage your time? Hey, if you had strong and powerful enough goals, you would figure out how to manage your time. You would get a book on the object. You would do something to manage your time. If it was worth it, if it's not worth it, why would you bother studying the art of managing your time if it really doesn't, it doesn't matter. But if it really mattered in the accomplishment of your goal and why you wish to accomplish them, see, you can do everything. You can get up an hour and read any book, take any class, make any changes, develop any skill and do any discipline. I mean, you can do it all when this how and the why. And when the why starts to grow, the how gets simple. Maybe one of your goals was to have a million dollar how on a hill overlooking Snake River Valley. Okay, that would be good goal. A million dollar how. Here is the next question. What for? What for? I mean, a house is a house with bricks and woods and walls and roof. The key, yes. Purpose is stronger than object. The object would be the house and that all pool. That's a worthy goal to go for. The object of the house. But here is a stronger goal to purpose for a million dollar home. If you got that line, it's one of my best for the whole day. Whole day. Purpose is stronger than object. It's okay to have plenty of objects to go for on your goal list but always keep asking yourself the question and sometimes it's good to just write it out here is why I want this money here is why I want this place here is why and you start developing those reasons am I telling you now this starts look now at the whole list that you've written and the exercise you've done now I want you to answer this question what kind of person must I become to achieve and what you achieve helps you to become and the more you become the more you can achieve and the more you achieve the more you can become who knows which affects the others the most your concept of the person you think you must become to achieve what you want this is time for a little truth here maybe you need to become much wiser than you are at the moment you need to become stronger you need to have a better health maybe you need a little coaching to really become the person I want to become I'm gonna have to some coaching physical coaching spiritual coaching developing skills coaching to be the influence you want to be you gotta build an incredible reputation what kind of person you must be to attract all that I want in my life and the people that I want and the opportunities that I want don't set your goals too low don't join an easy crowd you won't grow go where the expectations are high go where the demands are high go where the pressure is on to perform to grow to change to develop to read to study to develop skills I belong to a small group we do business around the world you cannot believe the expectation at that level what we expect of each other in terms of excellence far beyond average so that we can receive from the group we can contribute to the group something unprecedented it's called living at the summit go where the demands are high go where the expectations are strong so so that it will provoke you push you urgently insist that you not remain the same for the next couple of years the next five years that will grow and change so don't set your goal too low but you've got a better than work hard and be sincere all of your life you will wind up broke and embarrassed you gotta be better than a good worker you gotta be a good asker let me give you some key points on this asking and receiving setting goals asking of life here is a part of philosophy that helped me to change first asking starts the receiving process asking is like help me to change and it's like pushing a button and all this machinery start working mental and emotional machinery I don't even know how it works but I do know it works there are a lot of changes you don't need to know how they work just work them some people are always studying the roots others are picking the roots and fruits it all depends on what end of it you want it on so asking is the beginning of receiving start second receiving is not a problem you don't have to work on receiving it's automatic so if receiving is not the problem what is the problem it's failing to ask the man says I see it now I got up every day this year and hit it hard but nowhere is my house is there a list of what I want from my life can you see good worker poor asker third receive
perceiving as light the ocean. There is plenty, especially in this country. It's like an ocean here. Success is not in short supply. It's ration. So that when you step up to the window, it's all gone. Well, if that's true, what is the problem? Well, the problem is some people to go to the ocean with a teaspoon. Have you got the picture? A teaspoon. What I suggest you do in view of the size of the ocean is trade your teaspoon for at least a bucket and you will look better at the ocean with a bucket. Kids won't make fun of you. Now, here is something else to remember about asking. There are two ways to ask. One is ask with intelligence. It didn't say ask intelligently, but I'm sure it mean that. Don't mumble. You won't get anything by mumbling. Be clear, be specific, intelligent. Asking means how high, how long, how much, when, what size, what model, what color. Describe what you want. Define it. Remember, well defined goods will be magnets. The better you define them, the stronger they pull and give your goal purpose. Answer both questions. Why do I want? That's the object. And the second question. What for? That's purpose. Purpose is stronger than object. What you want is powerful and it will pull. But what you want it for is more powerful. Here is the second way to ask. Ask with faith. Faith is the childish part. It means believe you can get what you want like a child, not an adult. Many adults are too skeptical. They've lost that wonderful childlike faith and trust. Don't let that happen to you. Believe in. Have faith in yourself and your goal and get excited like a child. Childlike enthusiasm. Nothing can beat it. Get Things they can do everything. How exciting they hate to go to bed at night and can't wait to get up in the morning. Develop like kind of enthusiasm toward your life and your goals. And be curious like a child. Child can ask a thousand questions just when you think they're finished. They come up with a thousand more. They'll drive you to the brink. But it's really a verge. Have a plenty of curiosity. Ask questions. That's how you learn. Setting goal is very important part of our life's process. Guess how? How many people have a constant plan for setting, rearranging, evaluating, and strengthening the process of their goals? The answer is very few. In fact, if you will do this, you will become among few who do they become the envy of all who watch. In the leadership seminar, we come up with whole 10 year plan of goal setting, business goal, the personal goal, family goals, economic goals, financial independence. It's a basic, fundamental. In fact, if you will work hard and setting goal, put together a plan for setting goal, re-evaluate them, rearrange them constantly, talk about them, go over them again and again. I tell you what this process will do in my personal opinion. I'll put you in what's known as the top 5% and if you want to be successful, if you want your life to really change in major ways, this is one of the fundamental. A constant plan for setting, rearranging, evaluating and threatening the process of your goal. We need to take a look into the future. We've got to have a future well designed. The future is called the promise. And here is what we teach in our leadership series. The promise of the future can be an awesome force for your own future. The promise of the future, designing the futures, two ways to face the future. One is with apprehension and the other is with anticipation. I promise you in my travels around the world, most people face the future with apprehension. And here here is why they don't have it well designed. They've sort of left that up to someone else to fix. But here is the best way to face the future with anticipation. And you can face the future with anticipation if the future is clear. If the future is well designed and setting goals, it's very simple. Number one, decide what you want. You just take a little time. You sit down and say, do I want? What kind of skills do I want? What kind of income do I want in my future? Where would I like to go? Place I'd like to visit habits, I'd like to acquire skills, I'd like to have. You just take a little time to think about what you want. Economics, friendships, people would like to meet, places you would like to go. You just take some time and then I suggest when you've thought about what you want for the future, make a list. Just jot it down. It's really a very simple process. Get together with your family, with your wife, with your husband, your children, your business colleagues and make it one of the major fundamentals in your life. Constantly sitting, rearranging, evaluating and threatening the process of your goals. That's number one, fundamental for success. 
Here is number two, a clear picture of what you intend to do with your present resources. That's a fundamental figuring out a plan of what to do and how to manage your present resources. Most everyone I talk to has already, already got something. The big question is, what are you doing with it? Most everyone has some time. They have some resources, they have some money, or they have a paycheck, they have resources. The big question is, what are you doing with it? Where are you investing it? Where are you putting it first of all you've got to understand about society and about money you've got to understand how to earn it where to get it where it comes from and the importance of managing it kids ought to be thought from the time they just small what to do with a dollar if a child has a dollar and goes and spend it right away they've developed the wrong habits and sure enough if they continue those poor management habits over the first dollar you can imagine they're probably gonna do some poor things with those some dollars when they get older the plan we learn when we're small sure enough are most often the plans we follow the rest of our lives what to do with money and where to pull it we teach it in the care and feeling of ghosts the lays that golden eggs we've gotta be a happy taxpayer You've got to make sure some of your money goes into financial institutions so that successful people can borrow it and start on the businesses that employ more people. You've got to make sure that you give some of your money for charity. So for charity and for taxes and for savings and for accumulation of capital, it's very important to have a management plan for your present resources so that at the age 65, you don't wind up like most people do broke. You wind up with substance. You wind up with plenty to share. You wind up with plenty to Enjoy a plan for using all of your present resources wisely. What am I saying is, well, we all need a constant plan for the gathering knowledge, a constant plan for going to seminars. People just happen to hear someone. They happen to read a book that might have some idea to, that could help to benefit their life. When they listen to a ceremony, make sure you got a, your journal, take notes. Wherever you go, gather knowledge, but gather it on purpose. Do it constantly, do it daily, and do it constantly. We need a constant plan for reading books. Most people just read books haphazardly and most people just don't read at all and they don't have a good plan for reading the right books. Sure enough, the man reads the comics instead of the classics. He misses all the things that could really benefit his life because he doesn't have a plan. Here is a good thought to consider. Rarely does have a good interrupt you. Good ideas must be pursued. You must go where they are. You must seek them out. And there is an important Bible phrase that says, if you say if you search, you will find. Sure enough, a constant plan for gathering knowledge, reading the books, attending the lectures, putting together ideas, and having a place to capture them, like a journal, when you can repeat them and go over them. That's a fundamental that, if you follow it, will put you in a 5%. Guess how many people have a constant plan for gathering of knowledge? Answer, very few. And what you want to be is one of the very few. You need a plan, a detailed plan for the use of your time. We call it a game plan. Most people try to design tomorrow and next week and next month in their heads. They try to just decide what they're gonna do. And most people don't even think that far ahead. They think, I have to get up in the morning and go to work. And that's about the extent of it. But a game plan, game plan for financial independence, game plan for your work time, game plan for your personal time. The family needs game plan so that you won't miss some of the important things that are helpful to your life and your success. Success. The kids need a game plan. Moms need a game plan. Dads also need a game plan. You need a business game plan. You need a game plan for your office. If you're in business, a game plan for your business. A detailed game plan for the use of your work time. In the leadership seminar, we talk about how to put together this detailed plan for the day and for the week and for the month. How to stretch out the plan for six months and for a year. In doing business around the world, we found that you have to detail the plan in the great detail. Otherwise, sure enough, you're gonna miss something. And I can promise you that a detailed plan for the use of your work time will put you in the top 5% because most people don't have one. Mr. Schaff shared with me when I first met him. When I was 25 years old, he said, Jim, to do better, you gotta get around the right people. If you have a constant association with people who can better your 
life and better your lifestyle. You cannot believe the progress that you come and can make. Any association of people of common interest is progress, success, idea, and philosophy. I have a good phrase for you. Never mistake the power of influence. The man says, well, I live here, but it doesn't really bother me. See that not true. He says, I'm around these people, but they really don't bother me. See, that's not true. Whoever you're around, whoever you're with in exercising some influence on your life. And what you must do, and this wouldn't be the good year to do it. The first year you've heard about it is make plan to get around these right people. People who talk positive ideas, people who talk philosophy, the refinement of philosophy. See just the latest joke when help You've got to get around people who read, people who are successful, people who are growing and changing. Otherwise, your influence is going to be in the opposite direction. And I know most of you, wherever you work, you have to be around some negative influences. But what you must do is counterbalance that.